<coughs> our um, <coughs> July 8th um, committee meeting um, is uh, a meetings are about to begin. I wanted to announce that council was in executive session. We were interviewing police candidates. Okay. Uh, services committee. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to call to order the services committee meeting. First item on the agenda is fire marshal stacks report for the month of May 2019 and the permit report for June 2019. Thank you, sir. And good evening, everybody. Um, the, the month of May, as you can see, was extremely busy for the three fire companies. We ran a total of 98 fire calls, uh, bringing us to a year to date of 355. That was uh, basically the start of the storm season for us, as you know. Um, so we were extremely busy with a, a number of calls. Um, just to give you a real quick breakdown, Highland, as you see, uh, ran a total of 62 calls. Ingemar, 50 calls. And Peebles ran 75 calls. So um, it kept all of our guys extremely busy, as you know. <coughs> Uh, also in the month of May, was uh, we were able to put $300 from the false alarm fines into the apparatus sinking fund, bringing us to a year to date of $3,900. Uh, on the very first page, if you would uh, at some point just look at the dates, uh, just a reminder, this Saturday is the emergency services uh, family picnic here at Town Hall. If you're able to attend, please let me know. Also, um, we are continuing with uh, publishing the fireside. This, this month was... Uh, the featured fire station was the Highland Station 186 um, for, uh, for the month of July. Um, also, uh, fire prevention and public relations uh, on the 4th, uh, way back on the 4th, it seems like, but uh, we uh, still working diligently with the, uh, the North Allegheny Senior High School uh, in conducting uh, numerous um, fire safety inspections during uh, and, and uh, prior to the, the post-prom uh, that they have up there every year. Uh, the 10th of May, uh, we had a North Allegheny School District, a partnership meeting along with the area police departments and the fire company, um, as well as on uh, the 28th of May, as I think we talked before, is the fire department steering committee Mr. Kirk had mentioned last month. If anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to take them. If not, are there any questions from council members? Hearing none, are there any questions from the public? Hearing none, thank you, Mr. Stack. Thank you. Services Committee is adjourned. Call to or order the Public Works Committee. Good evening. Uh, you all got the uh, monthly activity report in your packet. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, one comment, the, our Liberoni, our paving contractor, moved back in this morning to start on Hilliard Road and, and the remaining, I believe it's nine roads. Um, his intents are to have all the roads milled this week and get by to run him as quickly as he can. He wants to be out of here by somewhere around the 23rd, completely finished with the work. So he's, he's moving very quickly. I'd just like to mention that I've had many good comments <coughs> that they're doing such a good job on the roads from citizens. Thank you. I will relay that to them. Notification that bids are being sought for the rehabilitation, paving, color co coding, and fencing of three tennis courts and one basketball court at Devlin Memorial Park, as included in the 2019 budget. Going back to last fall, through the course of preparing the budget, um, if you recall, we talked about redoing the tennis courts out there. They were last done in 2007. Um, there are, for those that have been out in the area or on the tennis courts in the last couple of years, there are some severe cracks out there that generally run right through the playing area of the tennis courts that uh, actually make it somewhat unsafe for them to be used. So uh, this resurfacing will remove the existing asphalt, replace the asphalt, um, new color coating, and we'll be taking down all the fencing in order to do that and uh, reinstalling the fence at the end of the project. Uh, the last time this was done, in 2007, uh, the price tag was around $111,000. Uh, we budgeted, I believe it's $125,000 to get it done this time. So um, bringing those numbers up to today's sort of numbers, that's, we hope that that's a good figure. Why, why is this one, are these so much, because we pave, what, every 15 years, our streets? These. Part of the reason, I've had several contractors 
and suppliers, asphalt suppliers, come and take a look at that to try to figure out what's going on with it. The only thing that they could come up with, the, the new so-called super pave that we're all required to use, requires traffic to be on it to kind of knead the material and keep it knitted together. There's no traffic out there. It bakes in the sun all day, every day. And what they came up with was that the material has just shrunk. It's, it's not, um, not a problem with the, under, the base under the asphalt. It's not a problem with where we put them. It's just that the asphalt has shrunk. So because it's not being driven on, it needs fixed more often. Okay. Notification that a resolution should be scheduled to ratify the First Amendment to the contribution agreement between the Town of McCannis and the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation for the Pine Creek Road and Route 19 Intersection Corridor Partnership Project. And this is a, um, this is for the adjustments that are, were made as a result <clears throat> of the final bid numbers and construction costs for that Pine Creek Bridge widening project. It's a project that uh, Toby Kordek was working on prior to his uh, retirement uh, that I was involved in slightly as I got in here. Um, we have received uh, this request from PennDOT to amend the contract to reflect uh, the amount of money that PennDOT will be contributing, uh, which is in keeping with the discussions that Toby and uh, Doug Seeley from PennDOT and I had prior to Toby's departure. Uh, so once that contract um, is amended, we'll receive a final bill from the department who will be in a position to pay for it. And I think Toby outlined the finances pretty well for you all to review uh, prior to his departure. So this is simply just the first step in finalizing that con on this, this whole process. Discuss recommendation to proceed with the bid to replace air handler unit for the police department and variable air volume boxes as included in the 2019 budget. Okay. And um, was it last year, Mark, that Tower Engineering did their study? Correct. Okay. Um, Tower Engineering did a study of the HVAC system <coughs> at Town Hall during 2018 made a series of recommendations, one of which was the replacement of the um, air conditioning unit on the roof to serve this room. And uh, that has been replaced. One of the other, uh, or two recommendations that uh, were budgeted as part of the 2019 budget uh, one was to replace the air handler unit for the police department, which allows for ongoing airflow within that department um, so that heating and cooling can circulate throughout um, the department with or without uh, individual <coughs> officers being present. Uh, the other item for that is what are referred to as a series of variable air volume boxes which are included on the roof throughout the building and are designed to allow for essentially a mix of heating and cooling in order to be able to, to balance the, the airflow and the, the temperatures out within the building. Mm -hmm. All designed to have the system work better. How much do we have budgeted for this? We have, I want to say $66,000 budgeted for that. I think, I, I think that sounds right. <clears throat> right, is there any, any question from council? Yeah, yeah um, 
Uh, Mr. Sabine, with the recent uh, round of storms, you're aware of any um, town stormwater issues that, that negatively affected our residents? I am not. You did good. We, um, we got through it pretty well. We had some clogged catch basins that caused some water backups occasionally. Mm -hmm. um, with one or two of the storms, Blazer Drive flooded, which it always does when we get a heavy rain. Uh, but other than that, we didn't have any large number of trees down. We didn't have any localized flooding other than that that I know of. Good. Thank we, you. we came through it pretty well. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Anyone else on council have any questions? Any public comment on the agenda items? I'll bring the public work committee meeting to a close. Call the order of the uh, zoning committee meeting for July 8th, 2019. Uh, the, Second item on the agenda is review recommendation to approve a preliminary and final subdivision application for the plan known as Walnut Court Plan of Lots or Walnut Court LP located at Dell Lane slash Ingamore Terrace slash Ingamore Road intersection. This application was tabled at Council's regular business meeting of June 24, 2019 pending the uh, submission of a geotechnical report for this subdivision. Although I should mention that in June, uh, the Zoning Hearing Board did grant them a variance to uh, allow them to use uh, a minor road, that is Dell Lane, instead of the required uh, collector road or arterial road as required by this, the code. That, that was uh, June 26. They, they did grant them the, uh, the variance. We did, uh, we did receive the revived geotechnical report. It was approved by our town engineer. Uh, had to add, have to add a note to the plan or had to add a note to the plan. Said that the geotech will be on site during excavation. And they'll also have to certify the geotech was installed in accordance with the report. But that's completed and uh, we'll be prepared to vote on that at uh, council will be able to vote on that at the July 22nd meeting. The next item on the agenda is review the recommendation to approve a preliminary and final approval of a land development application for the plan known as Walnut Court Plan of Lots for Walnut Court for the 27 units. It's basically the same a a application except for this is uh, for a uh, uh, land development application instead of a, a, a subdivision. Uh, it's also, the application was tabled for the same reason, pending a submission of a geotechnical report for this land and land development. So I don't think there's anything further to comment on that. Uh, the fourth item on the agenda is discuss a public-private partnership for the possible migration stream restoration for our MS4 pollution reduction plan in Wall Park along Highland Road and along Pine Creek in the Public Works Yard. And um, that is a series of projects that had been planned for as part of the town's MS4 compliance work. The engineers of PVE were approached by a developer who lives in the town but um, is doing work in another community in the west and he's required within that community to do a certain amount of stream bank mitigation work. That site that he's working on does not allow him to do the ex the extent of the work that he would be required to do because of the disturbance of the area that he would be involved with. So he approached um, Andy Banfield at PVE asking whether the town had work to do. So we sat down, Bruce, Mark, myself, sat down with um, the developer and, and the engineers to talk about three different locations on property owned by the town where we had planned to do some stream bank and some other uh, drainage related work. 
bottom line is that this work that we're negotiating would save the town about a half a million dollars uh, over the course of the next few years. Um, we would still be re responsible for doing the engineering work and the ins any inspection work. And uh, so we'll be spending twenty-five, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 worth of engineering over a number of years that we would have been paying for anyhow, but we'll be saving a half a million dollars in construction work. So. This is a huge gift. Mm -hmm. This is a huge gift. So we were going to, unless, unless the council can find a reason for us not to do this, <laughs> um, we will be continuing to help to hold those discussions and um, we'll be getting a draft agreement to our town attorney uh, to review and adjust accordingly so that we can move forward. But uh, I think the timeline would be that uh, we would start to see work definitely in, in 2020 because of permitting issues and such. But this is one of those things that as a new manager, I'm happy to report. Okay, good. Do we have to do a resolution that we accept this, or we partner in this, or do we need to do There'll something? There'll be action taken when we um, approve the agreement. Okay. So this is this was just the first step in letting everyone know what we were up to. The fifth item on the agenda is draft discuss a draft of the implemental comprehensive plan as it relates to the recommendation made on page 92 of the draft made by the planning made that the planning commission should consider extending the rc which is residential commercial with a combination of residential commercial district on route 19 which is perry highway that currently runs from the ross mccandless border if you think of where the car wash is on the south to prescott drive which is the ssb bank on the north Consider extending that to Hillview Lane, which is the uh, right below uh, Cumberland, south of Cumberland, it leads to the library and it leads to Carson Middle School. Other than those properties, currently designated Inst I Institutional, which is would be Community College of Allegheny County, or R5 Planned Residential Development District, which would be the apartments Route 19 North. Uh, I really just was really had the once I read, read that on page 92 of, of the draft of the Im implementable plan. I ha my purpose was to try to try to make sure I understood I understood it. Try to make sure the council understands what this means, and try to make residents understand that residents that could be affected. First, it should be uh, could. Would you, would you put, uh, point out, uh, Bruce, where uh, <coughs> the RC district uh, starts on, on the south? Is that okay like this? Really yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay, presently the RC district runs from the town line of Ross. And RC is a district that mm -hmm. is residential and commercial, correct? That is correct. And it has certain type of uses. It allows certain type of, currently allows certain type of uses, but the uh, implemental plan allows us to amend the RC, but the current uh, type of uses that it allows are, are, are gas uh, service stations, um,
storage of equipment, car washes. In fact, there's a car wash right at the beginning of, of the uh, of the RC district, right right at the southernmost end. Funeral homes and many others. The, the R2 is a residential area only. It's it's single family and. Uh, and two-family dwelling, dwelling district. And <clears throat> as you travel north from Prescott, Prescott would be right about here, okay? If you travel north, the idea is to, <coughs> and you're traveling north, all those, all those places on the right side are R2, and so, you would travel up to Hillview, which is leads to Carson uh, Carson Middle School. It also leads to the library, but uh, those are all residential. Currently, only residential. And there's about 11 homes on a, on a, that, that, that property that runs from there along Ferry Highway. Not not dis disregarding for a second the the properties of Prescott. So, um, 11 homes there, and then you wonder what would happen to Prescott. Would Prescott also be included? The 11 homes on Prescott, because when you go up Ferrymont, if you travel up Ferrymont, <coughs> where's Ferrymont? Your body, your finger. Go to your right. Right here. No, no. No, no, it's below. It's below. No, this, this should be. No, no Perry Mott's the curve. Oh, I'm it's, sorry. I'm, it's uh, been cut off. I got it off the map. Yeah, you got it off the map. Perry Mott's not there. Oh, I forgot it. There's, <clears throat> there's Perry Mott. If you go up, up traveling the west on Perry Mott, you come to the lake, and there's four properties on, on right, right as you look at at. at uh, at the uh, four properties on Perry Mud, one only has a Perry Highway address. These other three have a High Street address. Now these properties are also included in the RC district. Now taking that same comparison up to um, Prescott, if you use the same analogy or same yeah same analogy, the properties that would touch. Properties up at Prescott, off of Prescott, that would touch Ferry Highway, could theori theoretically be rezoned. Now, not only could they be rezoned, but if you look here, this property here is has 8,800 Ferry Highway, and it's it's bordering the the backyards of two properties on Casa Grande. So, I'm just just want to show you. The result that would be so that would be 11 properties on on uh, on uh, Perry Highway or, or else uh, what, what, what's the Memorial name? Drive Memorial Drive plus there's six houses not 11 properties but, but 11 houses on, on Perry Highway single family homes or or six houses on on, on uh, Prescott that would be that would be, could be rezoned you could see the effect that, that would possibly have. And uh, so I, I just wanted to point that out to, to your attention. Um, mm -hmm. I, I probably could you, could you turn the lights up a little bit? I can't I see my notes. Stay, I guess, but something in the hole, too. So <clears throat> those properties could be rezoned uh, under the, uh, the, the the scenario I see happening is, is that uh, a developer say picks picks land or, or uh, two two properties or one property uh, he then takes those under contract and contingent on him being able to rezone the property and he then he goes to to the uh, planning commission and says, uh, planning commission, uh, your your implemental comprehensive plan 
says you should consider this, and I've got these under contract, and I have this idea. So that would sort of, to me, anyhow, it no longer it has a level playing field, but suddenly slants the playing field in favor of the RC district being rezoned without, you know, and, and uh, we, we've all seen, I mean, I think some of us are aware of what happens in, in that case. Uh, Well, the old the old RC district is uh, is six point six mi uh, six miles. The new RC district would be four point four miles. That from that's running from Prescott to uh, to uh, yeah Hillview. Thank you. <clears throat> Looking at the draft. Draft on page 92, step one. Uh, it also says that that step one further says designating to no long longer include family housing. Uh, designating to so they would no, no longer designate family housing on this area. This 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 area, this strip of property and which is virtually non-existent there anyway. I mean, I'm a, the draft of the, the Implemental Comprehensive Plan actually says that single family homes are virtually non-existent there. Really, I mean, I, I just don't, don't understand why, why in a four point mile area, 18 homes would be uh, considered virtually non-existent, single family homes. So, so So, but there are other reasons uh, that, that this should not be this should be not a result of rezoning. They should consider th the three houses on Hillview. Since they do not border on Perry Highway, they would not be rezoned. So that's 110, 120, and I think it's 130. Uh, they they would not be rezoned, but instead stay residential. Also, the back of those properties. Looking at the back of those properties. Right. Yeah, on the back of those properties are, are, is a property that would be rezoned, RC, residential, commercial. So they would really be hammered in there. And uh, also the, the result of rezoning should be considered on at least two houses on Casa Grande Drive, 8800 Casa Grande Drive and 8796 Casa Grande Drive. They're in, in the cul-de-sac of Casa Grande, but they're back yards border on a property, 8800 Perry Highway, uh, that, that, those should be considered maybe a large buffer zone, large set, setbacks, some, something. This is, uh, and then the, uh, when co commercial properties do appear on Prescott, then they, usually how this happens is that the old, old time residents uh, will die and they'll leave it to their kids that never lived in the property, have no have no uh, uh, feel for the neighbors, and then that, 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 that then that's that's when this thing will happen. If property owners feel their homes will become <clears throat> also another reason is if property owners feel their homes will become commercial and say, instead of saying residential, some of them may not keep up their properties. Some of them may let them go, and maybe that's happening now. I don't know. It seems to me there. It also seems to me there's a shortage of, of a property for home. I mean, I don't, I don't know anyone that has a, a property that will that's priced right that doesn't sell quickly. Well, a lot of these commercial uh, properties are, are on, especially on Perry Highway, are uh, not not in good shape. So I would suggest eliminating. This recommendation to rezone, but I do not like the rec recommendation to eliminate some of the uses. Oh, but I do like I do like the, the recommendation to eliminate some of the uses, such as uh, service station, equipment storage, uh, and some others from the RC district. So let's let's forget about rezoning until a developer comes forward with a, with an idea. 
and let's do what's right for every affected, affected homeowner. This is basically what they have done with the Blazer Drive corridor. They, they, they've come in and, and they had a meeting to show the people what they were going to do, and, and I, I believe that some of that stuff ended up in the Implemental Comprehensive Plan. But why, why change the playing, playing field now by having this uh, uh, in the in the Implemental government, uh, Comprehensive Plan, uh, why, why change the playing field? For, for against these people. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, just want to point out a couple of things. Thank you for your comments, Greg. Appreciate it. Looks like you put a lot of thought into that, and I'm glad that you did. And you raised a lot of a lot of good points, a lot of really good points. If this was going to be a rezoning, uh, just to allay everyone's fears that is here tonight. This is not a recommendation for a rezoning. It is far from a recommendation for a rezoning. So I think we're probably about 20 steps ahead of the process. Uh, this is a comprehensive plan, and it's a special type of comprehensive plan. It's called an implementable comprehensive plan. It's different than the typical comprehensive plan that you see that is a, a whole bunch of pages and said, okay, do this, do that. Uh, here's all the statistics, but there's no guidance as to how to proceed. There's no budgetary process. There's no planning process. It just says go ahead and do this. This type of plan spells out a lot of steps for each of the ideas. This was developed through input through a lot of people through a lot of different meetings. And on July 22nd, we're going to have a public hearing on this very item. And we'll elaborate on some of those, a lot, all of the input that went into this. This was developed by about 20 different people. It wasn't developed by one person or two people. Uh, we had great represent, representation on the steering committee through a wide variety, including, including town council, the planning commission, our EAC, and a lot of other people. So this is far again, like I said, not a recommendation to rezone every, anything. It is a recommendation to look and consider the possibility of rezoning, but look at it in terms of comprehensive planning. Uh, Mr. Rakoskis pointed out the bad things about could happen if we do this, if it was rezoned or if it was in the comprehensive plan. I'm sorry, not if it was rezoned. On the other hand, what we don't want to end up with is something like we have down on Babcock Boulevard in Ross Township. We don't want a guy coming in and saying, uh, Mr. Rakoskis pointed out that uh, let's wait and see what somebody does or what they come in with. We don't want that to happen. That's the last thing we want to have happen. What we do want to have happen is that we have the community come together. We have the residents come in. We have the businesses come in. Everybody gets together. They help develop a plan for the future and so that your properties can be developed in a way that is consistent with good planning. We, look at, uh, we don't look at just uses. We're looking at forms. And by forms, I'm talking about how we shape things, how they blend in with the environment, how they blend in with neighboring properties. Uh, the one thing I do agree with Greg is that uh, if we're going to have, uh, if we're going to have, there's no reason to eliminate residential. If somebody wants to maintain a residential structure there, why not? Why don't why why don't we let them do it? But we want to. Uh, there's a lot of things that have to go into this before we even consider rezoning. A biggest thing is that we have to. Uh, we have to consider, reconsider what we want it to be. So this is far from a rezoning. All they're suggesting is that we look at it. Uh, we don't want to have, uh, we don't want to have Alicia's property become commercial, but then the property next door be residential. We don't want piecemeal planning. We want comprehensive planning. This type comprehensive planning provides for that. And it gives us protection, just the opposite of giving developers, uh, it's just the opposite of giving developers weaponry. It gives the town weaponry. We can help stop that kind of thing. So, and uh, we do have to change the uses, no question about it. And uh, we're looking at doing that. Well, Compre why, why comprehensive plan is a policy document only. So we're only in the policy stages of doing this. It's nothing, there's no rezoning on the table. There's not a consideration of a rezoning. There's no application for rezoning. There's nothing like that even going on at this time. Well, well attorneys will, will come in and say in, in favor of the, the, the development that this, this is in the comprehensive plan. This, this complies with the comprehensive plan. I don't see why 
you have to say RC district. Why, do, why, why not say we, we, we're, we were considering uh, uh, this area for improvement? Why, why not make it as we, simple as we, that? Absolutely, we could do that. Okay. Yeah. There's no problem with doing that. But it also says in there that we've got to, we have also should consider the definition of RC, and we want to consider well, it. We, yeah, we yeah. know the RC doesn't work. It yeah. was designed, there were a lot of flaws in it, even the people that were, within our group there were people that were part of that RC rezoning, and they even admitted that, hey, we did some things that we shouldn't have done, it didn't function. The idea was that it was going to look like Perryville. Uh, PennDOT put the uh, kibosh to that. They said there's no way are we going to reduce that from a four-lane highway to a two-lane highway. And so I like Greg's comment. I like your suggestion. Yeah, uh, I agree. I agree that RC uses should be, uh, uh, we, we, we talked about this before. They should yep. be, some of those should be cut out. But why pick a RC? I, I, I can see. I agree. Let, let's, uh, maybe we could just say, say rather than use that terminology, yes, because we have it. to redefine things. Okay. Just say. Uh, when we do, when we do our public hearing for our uh, comprehensive plan, and then when council, you know, fine tunes it, we can change anything that we want to in it. But even if we adopt it as it is, it doesn't mean that these things are carved in stone, that this is what we're doing. Well, it doesn't, mean they're, it doesn't mean they're carved in stone, but, but as I said, it, it, it tilts the playing field. We would still have to make all the changes. We would well, still we still have, have to, to do it, to yeah, but, but it, this becomes a runaway, uh, a, a runaway uh, um, uh, car. So, 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 sir, is, are we on a runaway train? quite on a runaway train. I certainly understand Mr. Falkowskis' point, but any changes to the zoning ordinance and the zoning map are solely at the discretion of council. Yeah, so but solely at the discretion of council, but you saw what happened on the, with the sheets deal. They, they voted automatically for it. Uh, the majority voted automatically for it, even though there are strong arguments against it, and um, I, I just don't see it. I, I I think that the RC <coughs> district should be taken out. Uh, I, I would feel a lot better that you just try to improve it. Prove it, like, like Bruce. Yeah, I, I think that Gavin. I don't think that's going to be a substan substantive change if we just take that change that wording a little bit slightly. And, and Bruce and I have talked about it a little bit. I think if we, we can sort of maybe soften the language to, to address some of Mr. Walkoskis's comments and, and make it maybe a little bit more general, um, we could get to where we're trying to get to. to on the radar without without really committing. Again, it, it, as Bruce said, it's a, it's a policy document, so you're not really committing, but, but even a, a less of a commitment, more of a just a, a general overall consideration of, of these particular issues. And I think that would probably, we, we would probably find some compromise language that would satisfy Mr. Walkoskis and still keep it so it would be a substantial modification so that we'd have to start this whole process over again, sending it back to the county, back to the planning commission, you know, multiple public yeah. I, I, think, I think there's some room in there for us to, to reach an agreement. And I want to reiterate that this gives us ammunition against a developer who wants to come in and rezone one or two or three pieces of property, and they have arguments for why they want to do it. Well, well, Good they arguments. Have, they don't have anything in the plan to point to. No, exactly. They, they don't. If they, if they did, they... they, they but we have nothing to defend against it. This way we have something to defend. As long as we have a strong comprehensive plan, which we are going to have, we have weaponry to say, look, you can't rezone Alicia's property. Sorry, Alicia, I don't mean to keep picking on you. You've been, uh, you've been a good resident here for a long time. Uh, so I'm just using you because I just met you and I finally found out who Alicia from Alicia Photography was after, after 24 years of being here. So I don't mean to pick on you. But anyways, it's going to keep us, it, we have, we're going to say that, hey, you can't rezone that one property or two properties, or you can't uh, rezone Memorial uh, Drive because our comprehensive plan says you have to do this before this happens. Well, don't you have spot zoning argument also? You have a spot zoning that you can't. Unless you're continuing it down the road. Well, yeah, well, For example, right here, we have a C3 piece. So I've already talked to people on uh, on the, the hillside here that want to rezone their property and said, no, you can't do it because you have no access uh, to Route 19. So there are people up on this hillside that want to rezone their property. Said, well, we're abutting C3 already. Uh, well, that's one item. 
So if we have in our comprehensive plan, uh, or even in our ordinance, if we look at the ordinance, which is going to be more important, that you have to have direct access. Uh, we, we did the same thing over here, by the way, on McKnight Road. We got a lot of residential properties as a zone D development. And we simply made a statement that if you are, uh, all the Saratoga houses, they're D development. Yeah, but, but we treat but, them just like but single family. houses that, that with a Saratoga address that, that they're wooded, But they abut they're McKnight Road. Yeah, the, but they abut McKnight Road is my point. Well, these are, I'm talking about the, the ones up in Prescott. There's uh, a number of them abut uh, McKnight right. Road also. Right, six or seven. Well, there's at least six. There's but they, and they're the same as Saratoga. They don't have, they don't have Route 19 addresses. Right. That's what right. I'm so, and that's exactly what I'm saying. We we don't allow people on Saratoga to use their properties commercially either. We specify that in the ordinance. Okay, you specify. That. Yeah, so we can do that same thing here, and I suspect yeah, but, we would uh, do that. I would take RC out of, out of it. I, I think that's a possibility. Uh, uh, I mean, as long as Gavin's okay with that. You, should, you guys should do it. I mean, I, I don't see. Why I think we can do it. Pardon? I think we can do it. Okay. Have we talked? How many of the people have we actually talked to? I mean, I, I think Greg's talked to all of them at this point, correct? I've talked. I've, I've, yeah, I've talked to some of the, some of the affected residents. I, 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 I couldn't get answers from some people. I've talked to quite a few too. I, it seemed to me like a couple on the west side were interested in their properties. I think there's three houses there. Yeah, there, there's, there's one house. There's one house with two, and the fellow owns two pieces of vacant land. I think there's only. Uh, uh, one house. We have these properties the, up the, here. The old, the old Perry, yeah, but they're old Perry Highway addresses. No, these, these are they, but, but still they're, uh, they, people, they can't, they're having difficulty selling them for houses. Right. Well, but it sounds like there's some on the left on the west side who would like to, and, and I was also asked, not that this has anything to do with this, but by Ash Marwa, who you will know his property going up the hill, mm -hmm. he wants involved in it if we do change this. But we, I think this is something that we need to completely rewrite because there's no way, you're right, Greg, that we can, that the way that's worded, that this can be put together. Well, it says virtually no re single family homes here. I mean, it's absurd. Yeah, they were talking about within the RC district uh, when they said that. They, that's, that's not good wording, I agree. And none of us caught it, I, so I agree with that. So we need to completely just start over in that section. Well, I think if we just make a few changes, I think we'll be okay with that. I'd be very careful with a few changes because, like, we need to make improvements to the district for sure. We, we well, definitely yeah. need to make improvements to the district, but we have to be very cautious with the the homes on Memorial Drive that that uh, in particular abut the homes on Prescott Drive. Oh, absolutely. And, and the Prescott, uh, how, the homes on Prescott that are about uh, 19, uh, 19 North. Well, I think that one, we already solved that. I think that's a well, and, issue. I mean, the reason I, I, I was trying to compare it with what, hap what happened when they, uh, they uh, zoned RC down below, uh, the old RC down below, above, above Perrymont. Three of the, three of the homes are right. in a steep, steep, Hill uh, on Perry Highway with a high a high street address, and they're zoned in the RC. That's why I'm making a I, right. I, and, and there's no disagreement with any of that, Greg. But and to address council and the people that are here tonight, this is not a suggestion of rezoning. It's far from it. This is a policy document. We are not even suggesting it be rezoned. It's suggested that we look at making improvements to the RC district, which could include, should include properties the whole way up. As time goes on, not a whole lot of people want to have a single family dwelling on a four lane highway. That just isn't the way people want to live in today's world. Now, if it was had different uses, and we got a plan for the future, not for the present. We don't want to get stuck in, in uh, we don't want to get stuck in 1992 when we first rezoned this. We want to plan for the future. We want to have future housing types here. We want to have future form types here. It was 1994. 1994. Yeah, we started in 92, oh, you and started. it went it went on. We had uh, we had a lot of recommendations from UDI from there. I'm sorry. The actual rezoning, thank you, took place in 94. So, anyways, we we got a plan for the future. We have to protect properties. 
anyways, this is a policy document only. It's not a suggestion of rezoning. And I agree with your comments and that we can, we can reword some of that. And we, I think we need to take out, or we ought to, we ought to correct that part that says there's. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, you can correct that, but take out RC too, too district. I mean, yep. I don't see. I don't see. I, I see. I see. Uh, maybe a, a R three. I I think we ought, I don't even think we ought to make a suggestion. Well, no, no. I wouldn't make, I wouldn't make a suggestion, but it's it's closer than an, to uh, R two than an R. Yeah. Okay. We'll leave that for people until we're going through. I've got to do December thirty first. <laughs> uh, any, uh, any comments from the uh, council? I, I agree with you, Mr. Raskowskis. Good, good point. We shouldn't be targeting a specific type of, even suggesting a specific type of zoning without studying it or looking at right. it first. Now, that's the point. Um, improving the RC district is one thing. Extend, extending it without a study, suggesting to extend it is, is wrong. Yeah, thank you. And I even think that just changing the wording a little bit is not enough. I think this either needs revisited or removed uh, just because of the potential for so many problems there. Yeah, I, I agree with that. There's a whole process that goes behind this. If you, if you read no, it. I, I understand. I mean, it isn't just Bill, it, we've already done what you're suggesting. Like, that's in here. That we suggest how to proceed. <laughs> Not part of the process. So I just gotta keep making clear that this what an implementable comprehensive plan is. Right. Right. Uh, and I'm gonna keep saying it and saying it. <laughs> you're, do, you're doing a good job. Your explanation just I thought was it. very good. Well, if, if this was a blazer <laughs> drive situation, you, you'd have a whole different view. I'm sure of it. Well, that, that, well that's what we want to do. That's what the process, process is. We want to do it like we did blazer drive. Yeah, right, and that's, that's not exactly so. It's it's not not rec uh, it doesn't say that, uh, that we're going to change any zoning in, in Blazer Drive. No, but it does say that we need a planning process. And well, that's, a planning that's, okay. Process that's okay. In, in place. That's okay. You that's know, okay. and it involves the residents. Yeah. Anyone, anyone else? Good choice. Anyone in the audience? I state your name and address, and then uh, mm -hmm. there's five minutes. Thank you. My name is Terry Wilcox, 8751 Prescott Drive, and I do have one of the properties that goes down to the uh, Perry Highway. And uh, I know people don't want to hear it, but I have to feel a little bit like all of the planning and public discussion that we talked about did not happen before the sheets. And so the trust level of many of my neighbors and the people at this council had a lot to do with it being discussed a long time before it came to the public's notice. And when it was discussed, it was January day, I was walking my dog and I saw two signs, there were paper signs that got deteriorated by the snowfall. And so we did some calling and we found out that all of this was long past. And for the people that think that it can't happen, the neighbors that I know that are going to have the backside of the sheets right outside their bedroom window and having access to the street when it's as busy as it is, is not why we bought our houses there. A lot of the people that I know are the second and third generations that are living in that Prescott Drive cul-de-sac. And there's a couple people that see the money signs about they're going to get ideas out of it. But I want my grandkids to be able to come over there and play. And I don't know what could go in the steep property that goes down there. But even just the whole traffic on that road, as we talked about with the impact from sheets, I think that it's not going to be the same neighborhood. And I read the entire report that was on the website as far as inclusive plan. And I can say that nowhere does it talk about involvement of local residents people with invested of their whole life to own their home. This is only the second home that I've owned. But I know that I, it's said in the plan that they would like to have small boutique kind of businesses and not chains. And all of those things sound really good. But look at the small businesses now that have tried to go in there and have not been able to operate. We're friends with the people that ran the bistro that's on the corner of Perrymont and the 
and Cumberland, Perry Highway, Cumberland, Cumberland Road, yeah. and they just tried their very hardest, and they yeah. couldn't make it. So I've run a small chain before. I'm a manager at the Cheesecake Factory right now, and I certainly understand zoning and everything that happens when you're trying to get a business on your feet. But we don't feel like we could in good faith sell our house. One of my neighbor's houses is up for sale already, thinking I, don't, I can't guarantee you what might come in behind here. So as we age and think about where we want to go after this, I can tell you my daughter bought a house in the area, and it's very difficult to find single-family residential homes. You said yourself, you think they fell, sell very quickly. And I think you threw the whole other thing in there about you don't know what might be in your backyard. Well, the biggest thing I can say is I, I just don't trust everyone that will be involved in the planning process and our opinions taken into consideration. I do want good things for McCandless. We have relatives that live in Portland, Oregon, and they especially really like to have little local businesses and not chains in there. But I also just came from vacation at Outer Banks, and when we first started going there 15 years ago, they had a rule for no chains. And they found in their little town with everything that was going on, they needed it. So Kill Devil Hills, all those areas, they now have McDonald's and Burger King and everything else like they used to. And we as a consumer vote with our dollars where we're going to go and patronize. And we do still go to little restaurants that are mom and pop owned and try to do our very best to increase the economy how we have. So some people's feeling I know is that we're unrealistic and don't realize how much help the town could see from commercial investment in our area. But all I know is it seems like when the sheets came in and said, we'll pay for that intersection improvement that you need, it was just kind of like how Kim got excited about what a great gift we are getting from this other situation today that she mentioned. And I don't think we should let commercial companies come in and push on us something that would be a better deal and make it look not just opportunistic, but like we're not as sharp a cookie as they think we are. And I don't want big companies deciding how we're going to be. I want the people that live there to get to decide. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else? I, I do want to mention on page 10 of the comprehensive plan, it says individuals may advocate for the plan and track progress by comparing the steps listed in this report to physical changes in the community and actions taken by the town. Citizens may attend public meetings where decisions are made. They may take an active role by pressing for the actions and policies listed in this plan, which are stepped toward the changes the citizens sought during the public process. Citizens also can support and propel changes by volunteering um, for committees and for special initiatives. So it doesn't say exactly what you're saying, but it, that's where the citizen issues um, in the word rest. Uh, good evening. My name is Jim Ban. I live at 8779 Casa Grande. Uh, I would like to uh, kind of uh, go along with a lot of the things that Terry said. I heard a couple of things tonight that I find a little troubling and a little confusing. Uh, one is that we, we appear, and I, I apologize for not knowing this, but apparently council uh, has unilateral authority to rezone entire neighborhoods uh, without just, just on a whim almost. And yes, I'm sure there are public comments uh, requested, but I'm not sure the distribution is very wide for that. Second, I heard that uh, you know the, the whole incident with Sheets had, uh, had been given a fair hearing and so forth, and uh, I'd like to just say I completely disagree with that. I don't think that the people on that Montclair neighborhood uh, received adequate uh, uh, consideration for the chaos that's going to be caused in their neighborhood by the increased traffic up there. I live uh, right off of uh, Prescott. I travel Perry Highway every day. That four-tenths of a mile that uh, Greg mentioned is uh, it's full of single-family homes off Memorial. So I was kind of scratching my head at the comments that were in there. Um, I, I'm just very concerned, very, very concerned here. Uh, Perry Highway is a terrific alternative to McKnight Road. And I don't think we want to turn Perry Highway into another McKnight Road, packing it with businesses that are here for a while and then gone. Thank you very much. Can you come up to 
Uh, my name's uh, Jeffrey Scott Shriver. I live at 110 Hillview and have lived there for uh, 26 years. And I want to thank Councilman Gregg for making us aware of this situation. We weren't aware of the fact that uh, our property was going to be surrounded on two sides by possible uh, commercial property. And uh, ultimately, uh, I want to ask you to engage in this process very carefully because there are at least 18 homeowners who are going to be affected by this if uh, you change the zoning. And I want to also make you aware of the fact that there are commercial properties across the street from me on Hillview and just north of me on Hillview. And there are seven commercial properties between Hillview and Cumberland. And of those seven, four are either vacant or partially vacant right now. So turning that into a commercial zone is going to create problems. I have to get up every day and look across the street at giant for lease signs. And there are properties, beautiful office buildings, that are not full. In fact, may only have one or two tenants. This is a consideration. Do we need additional commercial property when we're not already using the property that we have? Second consideration that I have that's very personal is I have well water. It would cost me $35,000 to tap in to the main line that runs in front of my house. One spill of some kind by any type of commercial operation cost me $35,000 as my water goes bad. And I'm not the only well water user at this point. Several of those properties out of the 18 homes still have well water. And that's another consideration that you guys have to think about. So please consider the idea that if you do make this switch in zoning, it's going to affect a lot of people quite negatively, and I'm one of them. One last thing. There's a giant hole across the street from my house. I don't know whose responsibility it is, but I have seen four cars fall in that hole and have to be towed out, including my daughter. $1,800 worth of damage. I have taken cones and put them around the hull and, you know, hoping that that's going to keep somebody from falling into it. And every time it rains, it forms a lake, well, not a lake, a pond, that's up to three feet deep. That's something the council needs to consider taking greater action to avoid. So the properties that are not being taken care of are the commercial properties. The homeowners take very good care of their properties. I have the garden spot of McCandless. You're all invited to come to my house. I'll give you a tour of the property. It's beautiful. Let's keep McCandless as beautiful as we can by keeping it as residential as possible. Is that hole on Hillview? The hall is on Hillview. Okay. Have you called in to let us know it's there? The woman has. <laughs> and to the West Penn Mountain. Or at least that's what we were told. And they have been warned about it several times, from what I understand. Okay. Thank I, you. If, um, we'll get somebody to get on that. It'll either be me or the uh, somebody. Appreciate <coughs> they can let me know. I, it's the first I heard about it plugging up like that. I mean, I've known that that ditch is Well, even if it doesn't plug up, there's a good 24-inch drop from the sidewalk. So that comes from West West uh, West Penn Moldy List down that. Uh, the parking lot. But it also comes from the big office building, too. Up above, yeah. your house. Yeah. And if council would consider uh, giving my daughter $1,800, she could use it to get her car fixed. <laughs> Thank you. Before we, cue, before we move forward, Bruce, Bruce, can you put your box back up so Kim's not stretched out of the way and can sit back oh, in Oh, do you want to close down? Are you done? It's mainly a solicitor that's in the corner. If we're done with it. I'd love to come back to the big kids' table. <laughs> there is a complaint form that is on the website, and I um, say that for everyone here and for everyone who's watching and just for everyone, and that you can go on the, um, the town website and you can say there's a dog that barks too much and here's the address, or there's a hole that's here, and, um, and then that will get sent to the department that is supposed to handle that. It went to public works. Thank you. Mm -hmm.
then thank you for coming. And then your next step is exactly what you did. So thank you for coming. So we'll try to keep our dog a little quiet. Okay. <laughs> Uh, that's off. To, I think we had at least one more comment, right? Oh, I thought you were standing up to comment. Yeah. No, I just like not scrap the info about it. You gotta come up. Uh, my name is Matt McCusker. I'm at 120 Hillview. Um, I want to thank Greg uh, because I think it's uh, not easy to do what he did and and uh, challenge your peers on something that is what appears to be, you know something that's in motion. So thank you, sir, for being uh, a good citizen. Um, I also think that it's also been voiced by Bill and Stephen that just looking at a new, you know, you know, starting from scratch is really what we need to do. Uh, I think that just changing verbiage is a very dangerous thing. And um, I think that it's already been stated by a bunch of citizens that uh, you know there's not a very high level of trust right now with this with this policy or whatever you want to call this uh, to this point. So starting from scratch and having transparency, I think is not only uh, advisable as a citizen for this committee, but um, it's it's necessary. Um, I think that there's a lot of things that need to be taken into consideration. I, I'm a teacher at Carson Middle School. I also live on Hillview, so I send kids down Hillview Lane that walk. Um, I also uh, watch them walk to school and to and from, but you know, depending on what type of uh, properties are put in there, that could, affect, that could affect them, you know, because there are a lot of kids that walk to the Indian Village or, or wherever, um, depending on what type of traffic patterns the um, uh, new plan is going to create for those commuters is a concern because you have children now that are going to be affected um, and walking to school is, is, is a lost art. I think the kids that walk to school, I, I encourage them to do that. I teach health and phys ed, so obviously I'm like, yeah, absolutely walk. But if you're going to put in certain types of businesses that are going to increase, uh, you know, the, um, uh, this, or decrease the safety of those, of those children that are, that are, you know, commuting to and from school, that's an issue. Um, the last thing I'll say is that it's been stated that there's three properties on Hillview that are not to be affected by this. I disagree. I think that if you leave us on an island surrounded by uh, nothing but commercial property, that decreases our property value substantially. And um, I will, I'm just going to go on record as saying I will fight tooth and nail and whatever else I have to use to prevent that from happening. Okay. Um, I will not be left on an island. I will not have my property devalued. We all own property in the North Allegheny School District. That school district that I work for is the reason that our homes are worth what they're worth. If you go five minutes south and you look at the same type of property with the same house, it's forty-five to fifty thousand dollars less easily. So we all we all have invested in this community. We've all invested in the school district, and just because and it's it's also the term non-existent. Obviously, we're not we're not non-existent. We're here, um, and there's a lot of people that aren't here that couldn't be. But uh, to say that we're non-existent is that's kind of ridiculous. And I know you can say that you're just going to keep saying what you're going to keep saying, but that doesn't make it right. Um, and to be honest with you, I agree with Stephen. It needs to be dumped and, and restarted. Um, I, I don't think what Bill said was I was out of line. I, and you said you said that it's already been done. I don't know that it has been. Um, but uh, like I said, transparency and um, you know, just this clean slate would be advisable uh, as a citizen to see this to see you know this whole thing. And, and to say that it's going to protect us, I'm not sure how that's going to protect us. But like I said. The three houses on Hillview that are just going to be left potentially on an island surrounded by commercial property, that's, that's, not, that's unacceptable. So thank you, Greg, for uh, you know, sharing this information so that we had the opportunity to come and, and voice our concerns. Um, and for those of you that don't think it's a big deal, it is. I, I, would, just, I would just ask that you put yourself in our position and, and imagine that your, your residence was in that situation to be you know, changed. 
There's also a line right after it, and I don't have the form with me, but it says that it should also be considered to make that property area um, Not like re not re not residential at all. Like you're basically saying like, and I, I it's already I've heard people say, well, you know, if people want to maintain their property, but it's in the plan. It's like it's like an afterthought. It's like this like loophole that's already in there, that if if uh, that if it's not, um, Thank you, you get it. Comments. You get it. Just do the right thing. Thanks, Greg. May I may I make a comment though to all of you? First of all, we appreciate your coming in and hearing you. But I think you all need to continue to be involved, voicing your opinion, be part of the comprehensive plan. You can't just sit back and be unhappy about things, and we don't know that unless you come in and tell us those well, we things. We don't know that there was any of this going on. If Greg doesn't stop at our, at our residence, we don't know. Like if all this, this meeting happens tonight, we're not here. So how about those of us who talk, who stood up and talked in meeting after meeting about the Montclair situation, who were ignored? We, if you, were if you're going to speak, concerned. please come up to the microphone and say your name. Uh, any more comments? I have yes. a question. Uh, I, I've heard this discussion with respect to revising tweaking or wholesale revising the, the language in question. Why is it that the language couldn't simply be comprehensively revised, uh, you know, s s s scratching what's there, giving thought to what the problems are based upon this and these comments this evening and other comments, and just, I think Steve was the first one to mention that, but what's wrong with doing that? That's what we're going to do with the public meeting on the 22nd, exactly what's happening here. And we take this public comment, and then we make changes in the plan. So that's what the public, that's what's going to happen on the 22nd. What's happening here is just early. But I mean, that's what that public comment period is going to be. And then we can change whatever we want at that time. Potential exists for a, sometimes in drafting things, you're better off just eliminating three right. or four sentences right. and just begin it again and try to say what you what you hope the language means as opposed to changing yeah. whereas or here before and Bruce I, I thought Bruce was effectively saying yeah he said that he was going to do that yeah, yeah and you were right. satisfied right. Yeah. no I think Bruce is saying he's going to reword it I'd like to see it scratched completely <laughs> well I, I and then us that. reword it yeah well I think that's what we need to talk about is because if you're saying that we don't need to do anything with the RC district I've never heard anybody say that. No, uh, uh, well, no nobody's saying yes. that. That's why we, we, we should be talking about it now. Right, that's why I'm saying that. we should that's, just dump it completely. Truth. You don't need to reword anything now. We need to bring it back up and discuss it entirely. Before, before you go through all your little effort that, in my mind, should just be thrown out and At reworked. What point would it be appropriate to, to have that discussion? Well, it's not going to be between now and the 22nd, right. but as soon as possible, I would say before somebody comes in and demands we do something if, else. If I heard our, our council president, I, I, I understood you to say, Kim, I, I, may be, I may not have gotten it quite correct, but on the 22nd, there is that opportunity to, to do that extensive revision if that's necessary. All somebody has to do is stand up and, and, and make the suggestion, is that right? Do we want to do that yeah. at a council meeting? It's not, that's... On the 22nd is when we're going to have our public hearing right. for the comprehensive yeah. plan. Yeah. Right. You know what a public hearing is, right. Right? right? That's where everyone makes these exact comments, and then we can decide, okay, yes, we don't have to make it at that point, but then council has a council gets the final say to look at it and see what changes that we want to make. Right. If you follow your normal process, you would review the public hearing the next month, right, at your, at your yeah. zoning committee meeting the next month. And at that time, I think you'd say, all right, well, we heard some interesting comments about this part of the plan or this part of the exactly. plan or, or this part of the plan that we're so talking we about So we would do that tonight. the next month in that August. If we, if we followed our normal process. And then we'd have to make yeah. a determination once we made all those changes, all right, ha have we now created a, a substantial enough modification that we, we need to start the process over again? Which isn't the end of the world, but obviously, you know, to the extent we can sort of fit it in the, the current confines with just kind of less major modifications that's that's preferable but if, but if we can't we can't you know we can go back and that's why we talk about blowing it up and starting over again 
I just wonder if we want to just throw in the towel that quickly. There may be a way to sort of just more generally address the comments that we've heard here from these folks and that, that Mr. Wolkoskis has brought up by kind of taking a step back with that with some less specifics, more general, hey, we should look at this rather than, you know, potentially consider rezoning these properties to RC. Maybe less, less specificity, more, hey, let's take a look at mixed use areas in the town of McCandless and ensure the word, you know, preserving the integrity of residential home, existing homes and, and future residential mixed use type of developments. You writing all this down, Bruce? I'm, boy, I'm, I got it burned in my brain here. Recording. You're doing a great job. So my point is if we could do something like that, I think we could probably, you know, pull out what's in there and replace it without making a substantial modification. But you may hear something on July 22nd that, that is another change that's going to be made to another part of the plan that, that you determined, oh, geez, that, we were way off on that. In which case, you know, we're going to have to make that change and go back to the process, which, it, again, is, is okay. Well, see, so, uh, I mean, we, I, council people can't talk at the public hearing. Well, historically, it's been public hearing has only been the public speaks. You could theoretically talk after the public's done talking and have, have a discussion then. But usually, in McCann, unless you take that, you wait till the following month and just discuss, you kind of take in what you heard at the public hearing. And then you come back and say, all right, well, I heard this, and you know, you're writing down your notes or whatever, and then you, you discuss amongst yourselves at that follow-up meeting. Well, we would, uh, would it be enough to say consider beautifying the area from, Pres from uh, Hill Hill Hillview down to Prescott? Sounds like a slippery slope. Consider yeah. beautifying the area? Yeah. I mean, that's it's pretty vague. It's it's pretty, I mean, I wasn't thinking that, that, but I'm not against, no one could be against that. That's a very, <laughs> yeah, that's, know, that's hard to well said, that, but I think it's already a nice area. I, I, I think you need, as Bruce said, this is a, this is a planning document. So you need to be looking 20, 30 years down the road and saying, all right, well, you know, what, how would we get there? It's almost like we're, we're, we're a few steps beyond. And again, I'm not right. disputing what the folks have said here tonight. And you know that may very well be a substantial rewrite or, or change to that section, but you know we're just we're we're a little too far down the line I think than where we actually are. That's what I agree with that. But again, this but so council will have their opportunity to discuss amongst yourselves before any vote would be taken, which would be at the end of August after another discussion at the zoning committee meeting. Sorry. I'm I'm Deborah Schaefer. I'm an outsider. I live in Evans City, Pennsylvania. Oh. But I'm here on behalf of Alicia oh, yeah. Delago. I, uh, I don't. I don't think he's he's representing Alicia. I'm, I'm with yeah, Alicia. I'm her significant other. You, however, uh, is the council here? We we our policy is we don't hear non-citizens. Non well, what were you saying as an agent of, 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 of a citizen? I'm asking you. He no. said council well, has to decide to allow it or not. I'm asking council. I, I have no problem. Move, move the way. Move the way. The, way the policy. It doesn't matter. It's up to council. We got well, four saying they'll waive it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, it's fine. Stand I just wanted to make sure yes. because then the next Stand person that comes up from right. somewhere else would be. I, I, you know. Who was that fellow? I, I know. We stopped him from yes, talking. we did. I'm, I'm involved in a lot of real estate development and so on uh, north of here. But at any rate, uh, uh, my question to everyone here would be, why do we need a comprehensive plan? Why are we talking about something, changing something that's not broken? It's required by law for us to have a comprehensive plan, sir. Then the, we're required to have it. But That's why right. did we single out just this small area? Oh, it's we it's singled a, it's out a whole, hundreds of areas. It's, yes. it's a it big plan. Okay. We've got a lot of areas. <laughs> this is a paragraph on the there, area. Yeah, this is just a little piece of okay. it. Well, once again, then I would go back to saying, you know, there's there's a certain amount of people that that want the small home can't afford to live in or do they want to live in one of the new larger developments and so on and so forth those folks are perfectly happy they've all invested their money a lot of them their life in this location if you go north of there we have probably a mile and a half of undeveloped commercial property right on 19 on Perry Highway why do you need any more why not leave it like it is and make that a part of the comprehensive plan to maintain that area as residential. The property. The sheep's property. Thank is you. there anyone here who can tell me why we would want to change it? This is a this is a comment. This is a comment time. So we'd like to listen to your comments. Mm -hmm. Do you have any more comments for us? No, no I don't. 
Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? Oh, yeah, Tim. Hi, my name is Tammy Yargates, and this is my first city council meeting, so uh, thanks for Greg for inviting us. And I'm at 8844 Memorial Drive. We're right behind the McCandless Memorial. We are the babies of the neighborhood. We've only been here for about two years. And we bought and moved into uh, this area that you're talking about. So your idea that people won't buy, that's not true. We did. And we were hoping to retire and die in the house that we're in. But it's looking like the property values are going to go south whenever you guys do what you're planning on doing. And what, with that in mind, how can you make these changes? If Greg hasn't, hadn't came and talked to us, then all these changes could have been implemented just like they were with sheets without anybody even being any of the wiser. And that's not fair to your residents. I mean, we put you guys here. You know, we voted you in. You represent us, not big business. And these developers want to come in and, you know, mow us down, get rid of our residential homes, and put in big developments. <coughs> you know, that's not for your citizens. That doesn't help us. All that helps is big business. You know, the, the, you got uh, the businesses down the street from us. And I'm all for mom and pop. I'm a mom and pop business. But at the, by the same token, those businesses need to be kept up. You know, instead of coming in and wanting to, to rezone us in our residential areas that are kept up and do look nice, you, you want to rezone us instead of taking care of the businesses that are blighted that need to be taken care of. And there's a lot of them down Perry Highway. You know, there's a lot of businesses that are for sale, for lease. There's a lot of businesses that go down through there that fail. And those aren't being kept up. And I want to know what you guys are going to do about that. Not coming in and taking our homes and, and destroying the pro property values in our neighborhoods. And like he said about the water, if, if you do that in one spill, we're on well water too. That's not fair. And if I'm putting investment into my home, we got roofing guys coming tomorrow, putting in a 50 year roof on our house. And I wanna see my property values go up, not down. And if you rezone this, even talk about rezoning this residential commercial, my property values are gonna go through the toilet. And that makes me very angry. And I'm sorry, I'm, I'm very upset, but you guys really need to think about what you're doing. Because you wouldn't want me coming into your neighborhoods and rezoning you and telling you that I'm gonna throw a sheets or uh, get go or whatever right next to your house. And if you're gonna do it, then all the residents of this area need to agree on the plan. They don't, they, you don't just need to arbitrarily come in and rezone us and make plans without consideration of what the residents want. And that's all I got to say. Thank you. Okay. I, I do want to make a little clarification. Uh, the comprehensive plan is not council's recommendation or even council's plan. The comprehensive plan was put together by a committee spearheaded by professionals who write comprehensive plans, who come in, listen to the community, look at the community, try to see what the needs of the communities, and it's their recommendations based on input that they get from the citizens and based on how they view as professionals what would, what would grow the community. So we, we did not, the, um, so the comprehensive plan is, there's citizens on it, there's representatives from many different areas. So I just want to make sure that I didn't know if that was a clarification that the comprehensive 
plan, and you can see the people who edit this, um, Pashkin Associates, are the company that we pay to come and do some and make these recommendations only. But they're just recommendations to council. And to so, piggyback on that, I don't know that, and I can't speak for everyone, but we have, and we have three members that will not be part of next year's committee or council. But knowing this council, I'd be extremely surprised if one of us who are up here right now would have picked or even allowed for all of that to be rezoned. Exactly. I, exactly. I, I don't think any of us would, would do that. So I, I, I know where you're afraid, why you're afraid, but I don't think it was something that was ever going to be a possibility with us. Right. And I think it was a good point that you made, Kim, that it wasn't we, the council, right. that made the this suggestions. is a recommendation <laughs> right. to us. So. You were allowed, I'm sorry, once. One five minutes. But it's actually per a subject. rebuttal to something that you just brought up. You, I'm sorry. That's our. All right, because our, I was told that there was a postcard that went out that I did not receive for the last set of planning. And I think we're not getting our money's worth for what we're buying with whoever put this together because. They said they got only 140 responses out of those postcards. People of what you want to see in McCandless, did you get a postcard? No, nobody here. And so what I'm saying about the lack of transparency is that whoever put together this plan didn't listen to us, did not even seek information from us. Thank you. Uh, any other qu any questions? Eighty-eight twenty-eight Memorial Drive. I just want to make a, a, just an example. When I close my studio, if my house is RC, I would have, be, have been able to open my studio in my house, and all the traffic of my house, of uh, of my studio, would have been in my house. And I don't think that anybody would have liked that. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I hereby adjourn the uh, zoning committee meeting. I call to order the public safety committee meeting. Uh, first up, chief's report. Should we take a recess? Just Good evening. I'll be short and uh, concise. This is the report. Need a five minute recess? Or are you okay? I'm, Sorry. I'm perfectly okay. good. Okay. No, I'm fine. Just let's go. Ahead. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Hey. Okay, I'll be real quick. Uh, monthly report for June for the McCandless Police Department. Um, we had a lot of training we did. We did one particular training relative to recognizing people suffering with disabilities. An excellent training for our officers to be empathetic and compassionate towards people when we confront them in a community that have some problems. Uh, during the month, Detective Egley and I performed several uh, venues for safety and security. We do uh, appraisals of different uh, buildings, churches, businesses, and we extend this. And I, I will also talk about that we'll be doing that in the future and we follow up with these venues to make them as safe to safe as we can I also attended uh, along with several residents um, there was a at Riverside Community Church held a safety and security and active shooter presentation and trained citizens in how we try to make their venues as safe as they can it was very successful it was nice to see a lot of people from the community um, also met with L with uh, A. W. Beatty uh, Technical School, their operations committee, which I serve on. They will be assisting in the near future. They are going to implement two school resource officers this year in their school, and I think that's a very very positive. We've had a success with our own SROs in North Allegheny, and I commend them for do that. I'll be involved in that process for the selection, and I, I think it's still one of the best things we can do is having a uh, secured environment having a police officer or an SRO in, in the schools and that, that continues to be a good thing uh, respectfully uh, Madam Chairman that's all I have for Thank tonight you. Okay, um, any questions from council uh, so let's discuss the nuisance ordinance enforcement Do you want to do it? Oh. I don't know. Um, 
safety chair? What Bob, are you talking about? Well, Bob told me it was open, it was vague, so we can talk about anything. I well, understood this to be based on the problems we've had up on Park Edge. Right. I, I believe that, that as, as Mr. Mertz pointed out, the uh, I think the, the nuisance ordinance we're talking about specifically is the animal uh, ordinance. Uh, this is in the general offenses code, and there we have had some public comment recently about some uh, problem pet owners, basically, that have been causing nuisances in the community. Uh, we've, we've discussed some options. I've discussed some options with the staff, and we've also coordinated with the chief and the code enforcement department. And we, we just we sort of wanted to let the public know and let council know that the first step we're going to be taking is, is a stepped up, more aggressive enforcement of the ordinances that are currently on the books. Uh, specifically dealing with the the symptom, if you will, or the, the, the nuisance itself, rather than uh, immediately trying to regulate the number of pets or by some other zoning or general offense legislation. Uh, we want to see, uh, again, we, we spoke with the chief, we've developed a strategy as to how we might approach this, what sort of, uh, you know, how the officers can take a look at and respond to complaints that they've been getting. And we're, we're hopeful that that's going to make a, a, a significant impact on any problem situations. And, and if it doesn't, after we go through this more aggressive enforcement action, then we will revisit with council and, and look at some other options. But we think that's the, that's the best way to start things off. Some of the residents up there, uh, they, uh, they want to get, have higher penalties. Uh, I think it's some, some of the penalties are $25 and that to, you know, the pay, people, that, that is, Really you speak into the mic. You're facing the other direction. I can't hear a word you're saying. Thank okay. you. I appreciate it. Uh, some of the uh, uh, people up at Park Edge um, said that uh, they want to see higher penalties. Um, so w would that be possible to draft higher penalties? And Yeah, I, it, that would be possible. I don't have the ordinance in front of me. I don't know if it's a range or if it's a, if it's a $25 maximum. But if it is, it's but if $25 it is, per summer. Right, per per violation mm -hmm. okay so that that's certainly something we could look at and come back to council with a, a recommended yeah twenty five dollars obviously isn't is not much of a deterrent uh in today's dollars so uh we could we could come back and do a pretty simple amendment to, to put some more teeth in that ordinance i pardon, think pardon the pun. Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah i think i think a lot of the problem seems to be other than the higher price penalties seems to be uh Communication between, say, the police officers and, and uh, the citizens, they're, they're pro probably uh, different levels of communication. I, 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 and they, they uh, maybe they, they maybe both have to be educated on uh, what to do if something, s certain things happen. And that so, is something we specifically, we've been working with the chief on and having, I believe he's, he's updated his officers on some protocols and some, some new approaches they can take in those situations. Yeah, and we also have to, uh, so we also have to educate the, uh, the citizens too because they're, they're just not, they're, they're just not reporting correctly. Okay. I had my call. I had other comments, but I left them in the other room. <laughs> Madam, Madam Chair, just one comment on that since we brought up uh, fees and penalties. I, you know, I, if it's necessary to, to address it in that fashion, I would recommend addressing it in a progressive fashion that would penalize repeat offenders right. but not right. jack up the initial fees or, or, or penalties for well, someone even, who's, even though who's, who's, who's learning. You know, yeah. It's an educational process. I think you're exactly oh, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that, that's good. But... Um, even the initial fee, twenty-five dollars is pretty low. Yeah. I would again advocate for a progressive I mean, increase. I have no problem with twenty-five offenders. dollars for a yeah. first offense. I don't know. Okay. Any other questions, it comments? Did seem like most of the people were not in favor when I did ask the question. Uh, almost ninety percent of the people seemed to answer that they did not want. To or feel like we needed to impose a number, a limit. Mm -hmm. on the limit on, on the animals. On the animals. Right. Oh, right, because 20 good animals taken care of by a good person who doesn't have any complaints is a lot easier for them to deal with than one bad one that bites and barks and screams all day long. Yeah, but, well, uh, the one, one th I can't remember his name offhand, uh, but he, he said, well, how many, how many 
dogs, for example, can a person, one person take, uh, take care of? Uh, and maybe what's so a uh, limit on the number of dogs, but I mean, I, I, I tend to, see, I see your point. Uh, it's hard to turn around. <laughs> It's, uh, yeah, it's. Um, I, I would have to think about it some more. The problem is how many dogs. What, what are you talking about? Are you talking about twenty chihuahuas? Or are you talking about? Well, right. You know, yeah. four. Well, that's a good four point. Four German too. shepherds. Well, that's a good point too. Uh -huh. yeah. One German weigh shepherd much. weighs about what twenty mm -hmm. chihuahuas weigh. Well, and then there could be property size differences that could impact that. I mean, so right. Like, so, so, so this becomes a acres. really. You know, it's, yeah. It's just a lot of. It's difficult to make just a blanket, yeah. you know, yeah. flat rule and just have it apply mm -hmm. and make sense for everybody. That's, right. that's one of the reasons why we're not going that route to start, or at least that's not our recommendation. I've never heard anyone that's complain good. about the neighbor's fish. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's great. Um, so any public comment or questions? For this one? Okay, well then this closes the Public Safety Committee meeting. Call to order the Finance and Personnel Committee meeting. Review checklist number seven dated June 7, 2019 through July 3, 2019, totaling $1,071,741.13 as submitted to each council, member of council, and posted on the bulletin board and the town website. Anyone have any questions about the, the uh, checklist? It's not really a question, it's a comment, and it's only because I've had people ask me about it. Uh, and I just wanted to bring it out so that everybody knew what was going on because there was a couple of notices in here, uh, one for, our, uh, for from Marie and one from Jillian. Well, you guys had gotten reimbursed for uh, Toby Cordick's uh, retirement party. And just because we want everyone to know that the town's not paying for this, we'll give uh, Mr. Grimm, a chance to explain everything yeah. here. The uh, the town was a conduit of funds. People were invited to Mr. Kodak, uh, Kordek's um, retirement party, paid a fee individually. All of those fees that were collected um, by those attendees were used. That money was used to pay for the for all, every aspect of the party and at this point there's a balance left a funds left so everything has been paid for by those who attended and with some slight <clears throat> number of funds remaining that will be addressed shortly but at the, at the end end of the day the balance will be zero to the town, no out of, um, no pocket, or I shouldn't say that. There were no town funds used for this project or for this event. And may I say that everyone paid for their own tickets, including any council members that went. So the town did not pay for council members. Thank you for that clarification. Any other questions about uh, checklist, comments? Okay, so we have our debut of our first monthly financial statement and dashboard report. Take it away, Trish. Good evening, Council. Um, you have before you and received in your folder a copy of June's financial narrative and dashboard graphic with a corresponding financial report for the general fund. So the narrative breaks down what the dashboard graphic shows as well as the results of the year to date, June 30th, 2019. This is a work in progress. We're happy to make any changes or improvements to this that you might see fit for in the coming months. Um, we will also add a capital improvements program component to it in August or September. So if I can go through the dashboard real quickly, the first four boxes show the general fund revenues and expenditures for fiscal years 19 and 18 for a comparison view. Um, you're looking at, at this report here. This is what the dashboard is, is looking at. 
And so what you can see is a comparison of 19 to 18, just to give you some reference point of where we have performed in prior years. Um, currently, we have collected 38.6% of the general fund revenue budget for this year compared to what we had collected at this point in 18 of 40%. In general fund expenditures for 2019, we've spent 42.8% of the budget compared to the 46.1% below in that box for 2018. So we're pretty consistent from year to year in what we've spent. Um, to discuss briefly, the bottom chart shows the monthly revenues versus expenditures for January through June. The revenue categories, of course, revenues are not always cyclical in government. So for instance, business privilege tax was due on May 15th. And so you saw additional revenues collected in April and May's months for those. I can tell you that the real estate property tax bills went out July 1st. We expect to see an increase in revenues for general fund um, as those tax bills are collected. So the 38.6% as discussed is consistent with prior years and we have no indication that we'll be faltering in what we have proposed for budget for revenues for this year at this time. Um, general fund expenditures, if you continue to the far right boxes, you can see the public safety expenditures versus the other uh, departments. We have total expenditures, public safety represents 47.3% for the town's budget to date. Um, public works is 31% of the expenditures to date for uh, general fund, which is great because that shows where you're spending the majority of your dollars is almost the 70, I'm sorry, yes, the 78% of the general fund budget goes towards public safety and public works. Um, that narrative talks through those boxes. Additionally, we have a box for net change in fund balance. That net change in fund balance, we have a budget for 2019 that shows we will have $346,900 in a surplus going into the general fund at the end of the fiscal year. Right now, we're running at a negative 523,738. It's not a concern as of June, again, because we'll continue to earn earned income tax revenues as well as the property tax bills that went out July 1st. So when we've collected 83% of the business privilege tax, which still shows that there'll be additional revenues coming in that with other miscellaneous state funds. So um, the, the, that number you'll see flip as the year goes through and, and as expected. And then below that is the cash versus fund balance. And so you can see where we're running with the general fund fund balance at the 4.8 million and our cash balance for general fund right now is 4.6. It gives you kind of a liquidity standpoint, um, taking into account other receivables and liabilities for the general fund. The town estimates, or the town um, has about $1.1 million in expenditures per month as our average. Um, the month that you see the fluctuation in that number is March, and that was because there were three payrolls. You see that in that bottom chart. As, as expected, it would be higher. Um, and then as I mentioned, the revenues for April and May are higher because of business privilege tax due dates. Behind that, you have the 2019 revenues and the 2018, 2019 expenditure reports with comparisons to actual year to date for 2018. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Actually, I'm also um, any, taking any recommendations for additional information you'd like to see in the coming months, you're welcome to mention it tonight or email me at a later date. Any questions? This is exactly what I, the breakdown that I've been looking for. Good. Very nice job. Good. Very good. In fact, when I read the first page, I said, oh, she should have a chart. And then I went, oh, there's the chart. <laughs> so it was very, yeah, I think it's very good. Any Thank other you. comments from anyone in council? Very understandable. I like it. Good. Uh, presentation of 2018 Town Audit by Independent Auditor um, Mark Driscoll, Tim Morgus, Vice President, and Dustin Starr, 
audit manager. <coughs> Sounds like we should get a copy of that report and get a copy of that chart and use yeah. it in future presentations. Yeah. Uh, I believe everyone has a copy of their uh, copy of their audit report and uh, a couple other documents. We have some hard copies here. If you don't have it, okay. Did we? Oh, that's the important part. Depends. That's actually not the audit report. Are they, are they, is that rubber band beating you, Bill? Fighting There you go. Oh, but now I got two. See that? So with all the documents, uh, I'd like to start with the one that in the lower right-hand corner is titled uh, Communication to those Charged with Governance. It's a two-page, two or so page document. Uh, that document is what we refer to as uh, the communication to those charged with governance of the organization. It, it's an overview of what we did and what we found during our audit process. Uh, the first section that's under, you see the different sections uh, are underlined. Uh, the first section talks about our responsibility. We conducted an audit in accordance with generally accepted auditing standards outlined in our engagement letter. Uh, you have significant accounting policies. Those significant accounting policies are described in your footnote, uh, specifically footnote number one. Uh, you did have one change to an accounting policy this year. A change related to your OPEB adoption, other post-employment benefits. Uh, there was a GASB that was implemented this year and thank you uh, that caused uh, the town to record a liability of about 1.94 million dollars, 1 million nine hundred and forty thousand for the actuary actuarial guesstimation of what your liability would be if you went out of business today to pay your future obligations for your post-retirement benefits, specifically health care. Uh, so that, that was something new that went on your books this year. Uh, accounting estimates, uh, all financial statements have estimates. Uh, you have no significant estimates that we wanted to point out. Uh, some examples of estimates are depreciation life or uh, your actuarially determined uh, estimate of your pension liability and your OPEB liability or a couple others. Uh, disclosures, no significant disclosures we wanted to point out. Uh, you, you'll see the, foot, the financial statements follow several pages of footnote disclosures. Uh, no difficulties in quarter encountered in performing our audit, certainly. Uh, there was some turnover during the year uh, with the finance uh, department. We were able to manage through that uh, and get the audit completed. No uncorrected or corrected misstatements as a result of our audit. Uh, no disagreements with management about financial accounting or reporting matters. Uh, we obtained an, a management representation letter d dated July 3rd that management agreed with the financial statements. Uh, we noted no uh, consultations with other accountants. Uh, we made no arrangements prior to our retention. 
that we would conclude in a certain way. Uh, we did issue a certain let, uh, a separate letter, management letter that talked about internal control deficiencies. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, the other matter section is just referring to the required supplementary information required by the GASB. And you have some supplemental information that's just some detailed budget to actual schedules that you aren't necessarily required to do, uh, but you have in your financial statements traditionally. So uh, that concludes the required communication. Uh, we're going to move on to the financial statements. Dustin's going to go over the financial statements now. So as Tim mentioned, um, the financial statements themselves, um, they're the responsibility of management. Um, our independent auditor's report is providing a audit opinion as to whether or not the financial statements are free of material misstatement um, and that there is uh, reasonable assurance um, that there are no misleading misstatements. Our audit opinion is a unmodified audit opinion, so that's also known as a clean audit opinion. Um, that's the best type of audit opinion you can receive. Um, over financial statement uh, presentation. So um, moving on to the financial statements themselves, um, if we go to page one of the financial statements, just to touch a big, a quick highlight on the year end, um, total assets at year end of approximately $57 million, with the large majority of that being capital assets, including land, buildings, infrastructure, roads, and so forth. You'll see a section that's after the oral audit opinion, that's the management and discussion and analysis. It's several pages. But when Dustin referred to page one, it's almost like it's page 20 or so. It should look something like this. Additionally, um, there's approximately $11 million in cash and investments at year end. Uh, total liabilities, $4.4 million. And the total net position, uh, essentially the, the equity, the financial health of, of the town of approximately 50, uh, $54 million, with approximately $40 million of that being um, capital assets, um, restricted $1.8 million. That restriction is uh, in regards to capital improvements um, and unrestricted of $11.4 million. It's important to note that the $40 million is a large number, um, but that's really what your your value of those capital assets are. You're not necessarily going to liquidate those capital assets to be used for um, projects and activities of the town in the near future. Focusing in on that 1.8 million for um, capital improvements and the 11.4 million um, of unrestricted funds is really what you want to look at in terms of liquidity. And these are all your funds combined <coughs> in one strip except for pension. So. It also depreciates fixed assets and shows all of your debt and all your liabilities, your net pension liability, your net uh, pension, or your net OPEB liability as well is on there. So, um, the, the first few pages of the financial statements um, uses a long-term approach in presentation. So as Tim mentioned, all of those outstanding liabilities um, and long-term receivables are included on the first couple pages. And then as you move into... Um, starting on page three, you get into your fund financial statements. Page three would follow the same type of application that you do in your budgeting process, using more of a short-term basis, raising funds um, to meet current year expenditures, rather than have the whole entire amount of, the, of any liabilities included in them. So to balance your budget, you're going to focus on the short-term aspect and the fund financial statements. The government-wide is pretty much showing everything that's out there, including long-term liabilities. Um, as, men, as, as Tim mentioned, if you were going to um, cease operations, those long-term liabilities would be due, and you'd have to use uh, your current cash balances to pay them. That's not something that's, that's going to happen, um, but is a big picture in terms of financial reporting. Uh, moving on to page two of the financial statements, again, using the long-term approach, um, total expenditures for all funds um, during 2018, approximately $16 million. Um, the total revenues, um, you, you have here the charges for services, operating grants and capital um, grants and contributions, $1 million for charges for services. This would include any types of fees, licenses, and so forth. Operating grants and contributions of 2.1 million, 
This would also include um, state and local funding, um, capital grants and contributions of approximately 71,000. For a net um, excess of expenditures of approximately 13 million, then your general revenues, including your taxes, is what makes up that difference. Um, the total general revenues, approximately the same amount of 12.6 for a small negative change of $63,000. So essentially, from a long-term approach for 2018 was um, a, a break-even balanced um, year end. Um, your end of year um, net position, 53.6 million, as I mentioned on the previous page. One thing to point out, um, if you move over to the fund financial statement, skipping over to page um, five, that change in fund balance is vastly different than the negative 63. So when you look at <laughs> things from a short-term basis, um, your fund financial statements actually had a positive change in fund balance of, of 848,000. So when you look at it from a budgeting standpoint, you had a very positive year. When you look at it from a long-term basis, putting those liabilities, those long-term long liabilities to adopt new accounting standards for that post-employment um, insurance plan, as well as the pension liability, um, <coughs> those are what brought that overall change in fund balance down. So to record, record an increase in liability, you have an accrual of an expenditure that kind of ate up that, that large change in fund balance. On the long-term side, short-term side, you had a positive um, 2018. Any questions on the financial statements? I'm just gonna point out um, note seven, which is found on page 34. Um, this is the new uh, adoption of accounting standards for 2018 that is requiring you to record this long-term liability um, for the post-employment benefits. Um, there always was a liability on there, just the, the thought process of how to record that liability change with, with this accounting standard. Um, switching from one style of reporting the liability to the, to the other under this uh, GASB 75 um, resulted in about a $500,000 restatement in the fund balance of the government-wide financial statements. So if you look at things from where they were last year and then looking at how they would have been if you had adopted the standard last year, there's a $500,000 difference. That was an additional um, portion of the liability that was recorded. The, the, the thought process is um, before you were, you were essentially required to show a liability of if you were to put in X amount of dollars to have your OPEB plan funded in the future, and if you didn't put the, those, those funds in, you had a liability, now it's saying you want the whole entire liability should be recorded in the financial statements. Where are you at right now? Not if you continue to fund um, these plans in the future. Um, so that's the overview of the financial statements and the notes. Um, no other note disclosures changed from the prior year um, other than the pension plan. And um, there wasn't anything significant to point out that would be vastly different um, from the prior year. Any comments from council or questions? Thank you for your report. Sure. Thank you. Uh, just a couple other points. We do oh, file sorry. we do file a DCD report that gets filed with the state that was filed back in March. It's just pretty pretty close to the same numbers, uh, just in the in the state's format. It gets electronically filed, no footnotes. So that was filed timely, uh, with an unmodified audit opinion as well. And uh, we, we had a management letter, which is, I think, included in your package that has two uh, comments about internal control. One is financial reporting, uh, and one is uh, related to your bank reconciliations. I, I think a lot of both of those comments had to do with uh, the changing in staff during the year. We met with uh, your staff, your uh, finance director, and your manager and went over these comments in detail and I think they've already been addressed. So uh, we don't believe that they'll be reoccurring. So that's all we really have. Have a good evening. And if you have questions throughout the year, please feel free to call us. I, I have just one question. Oh, okay. it, it does note the bank reconciliations did not match the 
general ledger, how great of a difference were we talking about? Um, the, the, the large differences were essentially transfers between funds. So um, a transfer from, let's say, the capital improvement fund or from the general fund to the capital improvement fund, what was made on the bank reconciliation but not necessarily on the ledger. So essentially the reconciled balance was more correct than what was in the books and records because that was accounted for because that physical cash from one account to the other was recorded, just not, not recorded within the, fund, the, the ledger. So if you Thank look you. in the bank reconciliation and you look mm -hmm. at your bank statements, it was transferred, just not mirrored into the ledgers. So those reports in your books and records were not matching up to the reconciliations. Understood. Any other questions? Thank you. Notification that a resolution should be scheduled to amend resolution number 23 of 2016 by name of current secretaries authorized to sign documents. Signatories. Signatories, thank you. Signatories authorized to sign documents uh, relative to the town of McCandless defined benefit pension plans. I believe this is to add Trish on to that. Yes, this so is mm -hmm. just a housekeeping item now that Trish is on board to include her in the sig as a signature. Um, number six is very similar recommendation that a resolution be adopted authorizing the temporary investment of the town funds by Assistant Town Manager Trish, Trish Greathouse and to make transfers of said deposited funds from and to accounts only in the name of and owned by the town of McCandless. Same thing? Same thing. Just another housekeeping item. Notification um, that uh, Allegheny County has denounced its 2019 vacant policy side guard and blighted structure program. Applications postmarked by September 30th, 2019 will be accepted by Allegheny County under this program. And I think we have the details of this on our, on all of our media. Yes. So you can, um, if you have a blighted or um, abandoned property that is um, in conjunction to your own property, that's possibly something that you can take advantage of. Notification that a resolu resolution should be scheduled to adopt a minority business enterprise contracting policy for the town of McCandless as part of the overall purchasing policy. So that is in your um, pack and basically it's the last one that you looked at except number four. There was some language um, left out of number four that um, just left best efforts as its own without defining it more specifically. So that was the only change on there. Was there questions or comments about this draft or the changes? Madam President, one comment. I just want to thank Council for the, the time to, uh, to, to review this in more detail, which we did, <coughs> as well as seeking uh, comment, suggestions, uh, review from the uh, contracting community and building community to assure that we had uh, good, a good policy uh, that would um, achieve our, our MBE, WBE goals while not discouraging competitive um, a bidding by, contracting, by the contracting community with the town. So uh, successful in that effort uh, and the uh, contracting association, local contracting association and builders uh, signed off on this and uh, appreciated the opportunity to provide that input to the council. Any other comments? Um, seminars and conferences. I do not know of any. Does anyone know of any conferences, seminars? The one that will be coming up that you'll be getting information on is the fall conference for the Western Yes, easy for you to say. <laughs> um, Western Pennsylvania Township Commissioners Association, um, the the first weekend of October, October yes. in Erie. Yes. 
yes, it will no longer be at Seven Springs, it will be in Erie this year. Uh, the reason for that is they're trying a different place, hopefully uh, enticing more people to come because there'll be more activities and more things for spouses and families to do. So they're giving, giving it a shot to see how it works and that'll be, as Bob said, in Any other seminars or conferences? Okay. Anyone um, like to make any comments about anything under finance or personnel? Okay. Hearing none, the finance and personnel um, committee meeting is adjourned. I'd like to call to order the recreation committee meeting. Number two is to update on a proposal to establish an activity advisory committee. We've all seen you know, the information on this, I think all that we're asking is, does council have anything that they want to change or make comment on? There were a couple of things that were added. We changed from seven at-large members to seven ward-specific members. That was a change. And then there was some eloquent wording that was added to kind of summarize what this was, uh, the spirit of this committee. And this would be on your la the last page of your packet. Right. Mm -hmm. Anyone have any comments or anything else that they want changed? They have no other comment. No one from the public comment? Does, does the council want to Consider adoption of the meeting on the 22nd then via resolution? I think so. I would think so. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the um, minority also? Yes. Okay. If there are no other comments, then this concludes the recreation committee. Okay. Um, the uh, committee meeting is adjourned. Council will be. Um, going back into executive session to do um, more police interviews, police officer, potential police officer interviews. Five minute recess for council. I need that to stand. Okay. Uh, that hip's a little stiff right now.